stepping up as the U.S. steps back. The Allied Joint Force Command announcing a top Canadian general is now set to take the reins of the international campaign against Muammar Gaddafi. And with Western forces continuing to pound Libyan targets and increasing turmoil in many other hotspots in the region, J.P. Morgan and Barclays warning another major spike in oil prices just around the corner. But former Under Secretary of Defense Douglas Fife says growing fears of widespread oil supply disruptions are overblown. He joins us now to explain. So, sir, you're saying Wall Street has it all wrong. The supply disruption fears are overblown. Make your case. Well, I, they're not completely overblown. There's a, the political turmoil has been spreading from Tunisia to Egypt to Libya and Bahrain, and the, the turmoil creates a risk of supply disruptions, and that's the risk that is reflected in the, in the reaction that produces higher oil prices. Well, I, I think that the point that I, uh, that I think is important to note is no matter who takes over in any of these countries, there's going to be a strong incentive for them to sell oil. These, the oil exporting countries uh, have basically one product to sell. And so there doesn't have to be anxiety that uh, if an unfriendly regime, for example, uh, were to take over in one of these oil exporting countries, that because they're unfriendly, they wouldn't sell oil. But, Doug, I, I let me take not, issue not with that if I can for, for one second. Because what happens, say, if Al Qaeda, the worst of the worst scenarios, if Al Qaeda takes over Saudi Arabia, Al Qaeda has a, has a principle of not caring about money. I mean, they're, they're, what they. What they are against in Saudi Arabia is all of their their frivolous spending of all those those petrodollars. So they could shut down a lot of that spending, do with about half as much revenue as Saudi Arabia is now getting by cutting oil levels in half. That's a scary scenario. It, it is true that it's conceivable that you could get a group taking over one of these countries that decides to simply drive the country into the ground. Uh, that's conceivable. And, you know, one can worry about that and give it the proper amount of weight. But what we've seen in recent history is that the governments that are friendly to the United States sell their oil on the international market. The governments that are unfriendly to the United States sell their oil on the international market. And so we should, I, I think, you know, if you want to take into account the danger that you're talking about, that's fine. But in general, we should recognize that uh, the oil exporting countries sell oil whether they're friendly to us or not. Yeah, Mr. Fyth, that's an interesting point you make. Um, the Iranian revolution occurred. Uh, uh, Iran lost about a third to anywhere 40 percent of its output since then. It's never come back online. Same as with Venezuela when Hugo Chavez took power, Pedavesa has lost output. The fear is that Libya falls, that oil goes offline, because it's really hard to turn back on the spigots once it gets offline. It's hard to get those oil fields back up and running. They become de decrepit and geriatric. What about that argument? Yeah, that's, that's a much more serious concern, and uh, the, there are disruptions that result from revolutions, and sometimes those disruptions create uh, damage to the oil fields, inefficiencies, and the like, and that can reduce the, the amount of production by those countries. And that, it, it, there's also a question of what kind of uh, effect a particular reduction in a particular country has it depends on whether there's unused co uh, production capacity elsewhere in the world but the thing that uh, the, the concern that you just raised uh, is a, a serious concern Doug Fye former Under Secretary of Defense for Public Policy he's now at the Hudson Institute good to see you Doug thanks very much good well, to be with